Hi everybody and welcome back. So far we've learned quite a lot. Things may seem a little abstract right now. So it's time to take what we've learned and make it a bit more concrete by getting some hands-on experience. So we are going to work out a, an example. I will guide you through the steps to create the following face. There's no need to try and recreate an exact copy of what I've drawn here, but try to follow the steps that I show you and create something similar. Try to get the gist of it at least. So broadly speaking, we can split the process into three parts. Part one is construction, where we draw the basic shapes. Part two is sketching. And part three is coloring. Most objects that we might want to draw look like pretty complex and irregular shapes. But if you learn to look more closely, you will see that most shapes you can break down into multiple simple shapes. Advanced artists usually don't bother drawing the simple shapes. They are so well practiced in this that they can do it using only their mind's eye. For the rest of us mere mortals, using basic shapes is a great way to get started. The cool thing about digital painting is that we can create a separate layer for drawing the simple shapes. And we can use the transform and move tools and objects to adjust the shapes. So let's get started to show you what I mean. First of all, we are going to select the ink pen tool. Let's make a group layer called construction. And add the layer named cranium. On this layer, I draw a circle. Hold shift to make sure we don't end up with an ellipse. Next, for ease of reference, I will split the circle into quarters using a horizontal and a vertical line. The horizontal line would typically be the line where the eyebrows are. I also draw the jawline. As a next step, I create a layer named Feature. First, I'm going to add an eye socket. Using the selection tool, I copy and paste the socket and move it to the other side of the face. I hold shift to make sure that the circle moves only horizontally. Notice that this creates another layer, this pasting. I'm just going to merge this pasted layer below using the Ctrl E. I'm not really happy with the placement of the eyes, so I will use the Move tool to move them a little bit. I also place the location and the width of the nose the mouth, the location and the size of the ears. And the hairline. So now we have our basic form and our basic proportion set in. Let's move on to the next phase called the sketching phase. First of all, let's create a new group and name it Sketch and add a paint layer to the group. Let's decrease the opacity of the construction group. Next, select the brush you like sketching with and start sketching based on the construction. The good, the good thing about sketching is you can be as terrible at it as you like. It's only a sketch and, you can, and we're going to refine it later. Even so, it's possible that the sketching exercise will become pretty wild and unrecognizable mess so in this case, I can limit the mess I'm creating using Ctrl Z a little bit and using a soft edge eraser here and there. Next, we move on to the coloring phase. First, I pick a skin color. This color is quite a light orange with a saturation of about 70%. I add another group, called, another group layer called color. And for now, I'm going to place this group below the sketch group. Coloring can be further subdivided into more phases. For now, let's keep it simple and talking about, talk about blocking and shading and highlighting. Blocking is just coloring in with the basic colors. When coloring this in, I don't need to worry about the eyes or the hairline because I will cover this later. 
Remember that the fill circle brush size depends on the pressure. So when I'm coloring in delicate edges, I push down lightly. When I'm filling in large areas, I don't care too much about the details and I can push down strongly. Next, I color in the eyes with another layer. An alternative way to block is to use the selection tool to select the parts you want colored in. Use the add and subtract options of the selection tool to select complete shapes. If you mess up making a selection, you can press Ctrl Z to undo the selection. Then, when you block in, you can just color the whole thing in in one go without worrying about the borders. Finally, let's add some shading and lighting. For now, we will use a simplified but effective approach to shading and lighting. We will learn more about shading and lighting in the next section. We use the bristle brush. We pick the skin color and set it a little darker. And I paint in the shading. The trick is to use multiple light strokes. We have to make sure we don't paint over the edges. This is tricky and time consuming. So here's a little trick that makes a huge difference. Just click here to lock the alpha. That locks the transparent part of the layer, while we can paint over the non-transparent parts in the usual way. So now we can paint without worrying about the edges. Next, we pick a lighter color and add some highlighting. As for shading, we use a transparent brush and push down lightly. Well done! You have reached the next level. You have learned to use basic shapes to create construction lines and shapes to organize your drawing into layers, to add some basic coloring, to use alpha lock to make shading much easier, and you've learned how to apply some basic shading and lighting using the bristles brush. When we look at the painting, we see that it still looks messy though. This is because the sketch layer is still showing. If we hide the sketch layer, it still looks messy. One way to solve this is to replace the sketch with line art. Here I add a very simple ink layer to show you what I mean. The inking layer typically comes in after sketching and before coloring. Inking is usually done with a variable width sharp edge brush. Inking can be quite tricky though, so let's leave that for a future video. Well, that's all for now. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.